Hello everybody, Johnny LaSalle the painter man on the scene and this time it's an older home. Let me switch the camera around so you can see me. Hello there. Hope everything is well. Uh, a lot of things happening uh, in this home. Uh, basically I've been uh, hired to paint ceiling trim and walls okay uh, this is a uh, pretty interesting scenario uh, that I came to um, and I'll show you what's going on uh, first of all what I like to tell you and share is what I'm doing right now and uh, what my equipment is and I'm gonna show you the equipment this is something that homeowners should do Okay, and what we have here, we have a vacuum. This, this particular model here is a dinosaur of a vacuum. Um, I, pur I purchased this unit, I believe it was back in like 1996. 1996, I purchased this little dinosaur. And it's still kicking around with Johnny LaSalle at every job site. It's a faithful little unit. Okay, uh, about the only thing I have to do is just replace the filter. Anyways, getting to the point. So I have a vacuum. The hose, the hose happens to be connected to my sanding unit. This is DeWalt. It's variable speed. Okay, and uh, very, very reliable unit also. But you see, I have the capability of being able to hook this up to the vacuum. Why? It minimizes the airborne dust and uh, we, we welcome that we like the vacuum sanding and everything's going into the vacuum you have to be kind of savvy with this unit I don't actually hold it this way I prefer to hold it like this just remember one thing you do not want to block the airway passages because the air that this unit is sucking in is to cool off that motor on top. Okay, if you block that, you're going to cook all the wiring inside real quick. I learned the hard way. I had a, 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 I was the foreman at a job and one of my workers was sanding a wall. And I'll tell you what happened with that wall. Another painter came in. Uh, he didn't have much light. Uh, basically what he was supposed to do is to dust down the walls, but he did not. This particular building was owned by another company and then it sat idle until the new company purchased it. We got hired to paint it and this painter just sprayed spider webs and spiders and everything, dust, whatever, right on the wall. So guess what? We were called on it. The owner was running his hand on the walls and he felt all these bumps. When we went, when it was all lit up, we, we looked at it. And you had daddy long legs like this, just stuck like they became fossils, part of the wall. It just stuck to the wall. There's spider webs and everything together. Come on, guys, really? What kind of painter does that? A lazy painter. He got fired, needless to say. Getting to the point. I had one of these nice orbital sanders on the job site, and one of my workers ends up covering. He's like really pressing down hard on, on the wall. You don't have to press hard, okay? You let the unit, the sandpaper, you let it do its job. You don't need to press down on this unit. That's not what it's for. It's to sand. If you need to take that much off, yeah, get yourself a grinder, <laughs> you know? Anyways, in this home, I'm actually sanding ceiling and walls. I already sanded all the doors in here and the walls. I'm working my way down the staircase, which I'm going to show you what's going on. Okay, so um, so so much for the sanding. You wanna you wanna contain that into a vacuum. That way, it minimizes whatever you have to clean up. The dust is not going all over people's belongings. In this case, it's a hallway, so all the uh, doors to the bedrooms are closed. But it minimizes all that dust going airborne. People's property is very important. Okay. So let's see what else I'm doing. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to show you what's going on, okay? All right. So as you see, I'm going to show you. Okay, see this right here? 
these are cracks, these are stress cracks, okay? Stress cracks right up here, right up here. Stress cracks right up there, okay? Let me come up closer, sorry. Let me get up. Ah. Okay, you see this? That's a stress crack. Guess what? You can't just go and paint over that, homeowners and painters, okay? I'll show you what you need to do. Here's my old reliable Ulfa. It's an Ulfa. I've had this for a while also. What basically what you do, what I said is you take the knife and you go, you open it up. Once you open it up, then you're gonna go sideways with it and make it into a V. You wanna go sideways like this and sideways like this and make it into a V, okay? And uh, so then that's, that surface is all prepared. See, this is, this is horsehair plaster, guys. This is an older home, okay? This is not like a brand new, brand spanky new house that has plaster, okay? That's what's going on here in the Northeast. Okay, let me explain something else that's happening here. And this you need to pay attention to because if you purchase an older home, this is, this is really gonna happen, okay? You see what's going on here in the ceiling? You know what this is? A lot of people don't know this. Look at the surface. You probably still don't know. You know what they call this? This is called calcimine. Calcimine, it's a type of plaster. And, and there is a chemical reaction that takes place, and this gets real chalky. So guess what? Guess what happens? You get pain failure. Why? I'll tell you why. Two reasons. In this case, what's happened here in this home. I'm going to show you what's happened. Okay? Okay. This is the staircase going up to the attic. The attic is not heated. So you have a cold zone in here cold temperatures, just like outside, and on the inside you have warmth, but guess what? There's no, I don't, I don't believe there's insulation in between these two, okay? Recently, what I noticed, I was wondering, why so many cracks on that staircase, on the ceiling? And I'm like, man, there must be something happening here. Well, look what's happening, see? This is, this is broken, this staircase, thread, whatever, was uh, a step was, was replaced apparently recently. So that probably underwent a lot of stress, banging, nailing, that sort of thing. And guess what? You have horsehair plaster. That stuff is really, really flexible and soft. Okay. Now, this is just Johnny LaSalle coming to a conclusion based on what he's seen. But I'll tell you another thing. Okay, I got my six in one, right? I think we've discussed... This is made by Hyde. We've already discussed tools. This is a six in one. This tool, this edge right here, you can, you, you can also use it to open cracks. See, see this crack right here? I didn't get to open that one. But you see, look, you gotta open it. And you can use this tool for that, okay? And then you go sideways with it, go sideways. See how it opens it up? Don't worry, it's not gonna fall apart. Look at it, see how I made it bigger? Okay, why did I make it bigger? Why? Because that's releasing the stress from this section. See how it's curvy? See, it just curves right down, and then it goes, it has all kinds of curves here. Well, that's part of the reason. All this stuff is failing. See, this, you know, similar to an earthquake, you have different plates that settle. One sticks up, the other falls under. See, that's what's happening here. So I'm gonna have to uh, prime all this. Okay, speaking of primer. All right, let me turn you around. Okay, speaking of primer, here's where you gotta be savvy. Do your homework. Just don't go to Home Depot and say, oh, I need a primer first for my ceiling. You gotta tell them it's calcimine. The person, if he's experienced behind the counter, he's gonna, he's gonna suggest to you to get what they call calcibonder. Okay, calcibonder is something formulated for this type of ceiling. Chalky ceiling, okay? If you cannot get calcibonder, then you need to get yourself an oil-based primer. If you don't really know this stuff, you can Google it, okay? How to, how to contain uh, uh, peelage or peeling paint on, on calcimine ceilings or walls. And it'll tell you, okay? I've already, 
I've done this many years, you know, for many years, so I already know what to use. That's that's part of the experience. You don't, I don't have to Google anything. I'm I'm familiar. Okay, so uh, calcibonder for calcimine sealings. There's an effervescence that takes place. It it secretes salts. That's why this chemical reaction takes place in older homes. This is the old way. This is like 1900s, I believe. This is probably a 200 year old house. Okay in Grafton, Massachusetts. So you put an oil-based primer. So I open all of the cracks. I'm not gonna patch anything yet. I'm gonna put that primer on, allow the primer to dry, oil-based primer, quick drying, allow it to dry, and then you come back and you fill all the cracks, okay? Including the walls. Walls, see? All these cracks are open. I'm leaving them open. They have pictures here. Look, you had you had a couple screw screws that were shallow. The, they're called buttons. You see, like little round spots that are, uh, suddenly start sticking out because there was weight on this wall because of a picture. Okay, so what you do in this case? Okay, you grab yourself a Phillips screwdriver, and you're gonna sink them. You keep tightening them, tightening them, tightening them until they sink. Why do you want it to sink? Well, you want to put enough material in there and you want to prevent this wall from moving it back and forth. That's why it created buttons, okay? So, look, all of this paint, this is all paint that's, that, that, that just, I just scraped right off this wall and it just kept, keeps on coming. And the thing is, you cannot coat. Once you put paint on this and it's loose, that, that, that stuff is going to start breaking apart and it's going to start rolling around on your roller. Yeah, then you think you have problems. That stuff starts chipping off. Wet surface, what are you going to start doing? You're going to start scraping it so all the wet chips fall on, you know, and then you're going to start stepping all over it. Okay. You need to do your prep work. Something that I saw here, I saw patches that got painted over, never got sanded. That's why I'm using that orbital. That orbital will, will, will smooth, smoothen all that up. Okay? So, something else I forgot to tell you. Let's go back upstairs. You have another scenario. Usually you paint top to bottom. Ceiling, then trim, then walls, right? But guess what? If you have crown moldings, you do trim first, ceiling second, Walls third. Let me show you. Let's go back up here, okay? Go back up to this little platform. Look at the little crown. See the crown? Okay? This is getting painted in a satin finish. It's easier to paint the crown and slop the paint, the ceiling, the, I'm sorry, the trim paint on both surfaces, ceiling and walls. And then you cut the ceiling to the crown. You cut the wall later to the crown. It's easier to do that way instead of you painting ceiling and walls and then you go back and you, you're trying to put paint in that little tiny little reveal there. Huh. You see? Make your life easy. Paint the trim first. In this case, if there's like a living room, you have a living room or dining room, formal dining room, formal living room with crown moldings. Moldings get painted first. Moldings, trim. Everything trim gets painted first, okay? That's a must. A must. So ye, you're, 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 you got Johnny LaSalle here telling you what needs to be done. Look at all this sash. This is not removable. These are the old windows. I gotta paint all, these, all this sash. Okay, this, this is time consuming. And you have to do two coats. It's going from white to linen white. Linen white has a more creamy color and it streaks. You can't do it in one coat, okay? Besides, all of the trim in here was painted in oil base. Guess what? You gotta sand everything. Okay? Something that I do, I sand everything, all the trim, oil base. Then I use what they call will bond. And I don't, I don't clean all of it. I clean it gradually because will bond gives you like a half hour where things are kind of soft and you're able to coat it, okay? So you're gonna will bond this. 
something else you may want to get into is to remove all of the fixtures, all the hardware on doors, locks, has to come off. Okay? Don't go slopping paint on it and don't go put don't go put tape on it because tape paint is gonna seep behind the tape. You're better off removing it. You do a neater job. Okay? So this is the entrance down here. Again, you have See, all this trim has to get painted. Stress cracks. Happens a lot in older homes. Stress cracks. Okay? In this case, the pictures are going back. These are staying in. I'm not taking them out. Once I start cutting, like once I cut the wall, then I'll remove that. I'll paint, put some paint on it, let it dry, and then put that back in. That's how you do it. Okay? You have some sensors here, too. Remove that. If you cannot, if they're hardwired to the house, you do not remove it. Then you put tape around this and carefully cut around it, okay? And so most houses are, it's a requirement for them, all the sensors, CO2, CO, or whatever, uh, um, you know what I mean. Uh, carbon monoxide sensors and chemical sensors, so a lot of homes have that, you know, even paint sets them off. So you either have to cover them up, all right, or remove them. If you cannot remove them, then you're going to have to cover them up, okay? So guys, I won't take any more of your time. I think I've used probably about 15 minutes already on this video. And um, so that's my scenario today, okay? So keep in mind, I'm going to give you tidbits. I, that's why I do this. When I face something that I know that I have not talked about, I, I make a video. People need to know. But... The most important thing is the products that you're using. If you're not sure, ask. For sure. Ask. Consult a painter. He'll give you tidbits. You know, some, are, some tell you more than others. Others don't want to give away the secrets. You know? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with giving out secrets. You know? So. Okay, God bless you. Thank you for watching my videos. Johnny LaSalle, the painter man, is signing off. And enjoy your day. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.